Greetings, folks, and welcome to today's show. Uh, it's time for the school's bells to start ringing again, so I, I hope everybody's ready and uh, have all your gear uh, lined up and are, are ready to go. Uh, our guest today is uh, Dr. Van Lawson, who, as you know, is director of schools in Tullahoma and has been in that capacity for 16 years, which is exceptionally long in, uh, in this state, at least. And, uh, however, this is expected to be his last year. So, uh, a lot of folks, me included, have mixed feelings about that. Well, not very mixed. I have a definite opinion on it. But anyway, uh, how is that, now that you got a, you got a year to serve, knowing that that's the end, how is that going to affect your operation this year? Well, hopefully not at all. Certainly one of the challenges that uh, that I have every day is to make sure that I leave the place tomorrow, next week, next year better than I found it. So the task that we have is simply to do the best we can with whatever time that we have available. This has been a, a wonderful place to work, a wonderful place to live, and I I have an obligation, and that professional obligation is to do my best to build on what folks like Don Embry put in place and make this place better whenever I leave. Yeah. So it may be tomorrow, it may be in a year, but, but uh, the goal is still the same. Better than when you found it. Right? Absolutely. Okay. Very good. Uh, well, with that, folks, uh, let's take a short commercial break and we'll get into business. The highest standard of trust offers a sense of safety and comfort. It's established over time. You know when you see it. You know when you feel it. There's a standard of trust in healthcare. It's the Joint Commission Gold Seal of Approval. In 2003, Life Care Center of Tullahoma voluntarily achieved this accreditation and maintains it still today. Life Care, meeting a higher standard because residents matter most. This is J.D. Oliver here at the Smokehouse on Mont Eagle Mountain. My sisters Betsy, Nancy, and I would like to thank you for supporting our family business for over 50 years. Hello, this is Stella Parton, and I am standing here right in the middle of Jim Oliver's Smokehouse Restaurant. But you need to come in here. We just got through doing a show. We also have a music scene going on here, and I want to invite you to come down because it is your mountain destination. Music on the mountain in Mont Eagle, Tennessee. My name's Betsy Oliver. I'm the kitchen manager here. We serve a lot of ribs and barbecue and fried chicken. Hey, this is Sean Mayer, and I just want to let everybody know to stop in at the Smokehouse if you're ever on your way to Chattanooga or Nashville. They not only have a great gift shop, awesome food, great entertainment on Saturday nights, but beautiful cabins to stay in. Check it out. Make the Smokehouse your mountain getaway destination. Stay in one of our 84 lodge rooms and 20 timber frame log cabins. Look around our trading posts and eat in our delicious restaurant. Enjoy music on the mountain every Saturday night featuring the best of Nashville. Our family hopes to see you this year at Jim Oliver Smokehouse. We're back, folks, and we're talking today with Dr. Dan Lawson, the director of schools in Tullahoma. And uh, Tullahoma has just, uh, has, the school board has just uh, uh, made a decision that uh, is, is quite significant. And that is to convert the uh, whole system to uh, electronic textbooks. No more written textbooks. And uh, there are a lot of pluses and minuses, I'm sure, associated with that. But uh, that was your idea. You've been pushing it quite a bit. And uh, so talk about that. Yeah, let me, let me offer a bit of a disclaimer. Uh, the Board of Education has not yet made that decision, but they've, they've spent a lot of time and a lot of study. It's certainly a priority that this board has. They hope to accomplish this. But the goal is to, to take our current textbook resources that we have, the money that we spend on textbooks now, which in a given year is between three and four hundred thousand dollars. And instead of spending that on a hundred dollar books and and that's probably pretty close to our average price especially at the secondary level instead of doing that coming up with some way to digitally deliver content and uh, whether that's on a phone whether that's on an ipad a, a laptop a desktop really doesn't matter the carrier but deliver that content 
in some mechanism that we can put that in every kid's hand. As we've dialogued a lot and as we've considered how that best works for us, we're probably looking at, at putting two pretty unique ideas in concert. One is taking open source textbooks. Open source uh, for our viewers simply means it's something that is readily available in the, uh, in the world of literature today. It's something that we have license to reuse. So unlike the, the copyright restrictions that we see on, on a lot of materials, we have license to reuse, we have license to redistribute, and we have license to remix. In other words, we could take two or three text, open source text that we like, and mix components of those texts to match where we are with our Tennessee standards and with our Common Core standards. From the perspective of value of that, we think it's, it's really neat in that our kids are gaining access to state-of-the-art technology as well as the most recent curricular materials available to them. And I'll give you a great example. That's got to be a lot easier to update than printing a new book. Absolutely, <laughs> and, and we're going to speak yeah. to that example right, right. now. Um, four weeks ago, uh, the science world was absolutely abuzz and met in CERN uh, talking about the higgs boson particle. All right. In the state of Tennessee, we have a six-year cycle on textbook adoptions. Simply put, every six years you buy a new textbook. Now, it's, it's amazing to me that we had something that was so revolutionary in the world of physics that in the state of Tennessee, we may not have discussed in a textbook for the next five or six years. Utilization of open source and e-text or digital text would allow us to push out a change as quickly as one day if we wanted to make that happen. If I take something that's a different example, but, but just as important to us, if I look at a typical American history textbook, there's going to be discussion of the Civil War. But that discussion of the Civil War is going to be about what started in Virginia or, or it started in South Carolina and ended at a courthouse somewhere and, oh, by the way, maybe some other states were involved. If we look at the viability of open source, there's nothing that would prevent us from having someone like a regional expert, like a Michael Bradley here, and say, Dr. Bradley, would you consider writing a chapter for our textbooks have something that our kids could apply, something that's relevant to them, important to them. They understand the names, the places, and the importance, and it really makes that educational experience a lot more applicable and a lot more valuable to them. Like the Tullahoma campaign. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, well, and uh, okay, you, you said the, uh, that the school board hadn't quite committed. My understanding was that they had made the decision recognizing you don't have late yet have the funds in right, place. Right, right. So you've got to, that maneuver. But I thought otherwise they had said. No, yes. I, I think uh, without question, there's a great level of commitment. I think without question, there's a desire to accomplish that. But there is not a formal plan in place and there are not dollars in place to make that happen right now. When is the plan going to be developed? Uh, we're working on the plan right now, and we're working on the marketing of said plan right now. I visited with, um, with our board in a couple of sessions, have a meeting with our, our business roundtable. In fact, tomorrow, um, I have a team of folks who are meeting with city council on uh, August 13th, and we just want to make sure that folks understand the real advantages associated with this. Now, it's, it's not going to save us a lot of money. We believe that the money that we're spending today on print will simply go to technology. So we think we're going to have a, a pretty much moving from one hand to the other. But the big challenge in implementation is that our print is currently on a six-year cycle. And it, for, in order for us to adopt, we're going to have to have a, a pretty good amount of money right up front to put the technology in folks' I hands. I heard a number like a million dollars. Yeah, we're thinking about nearly 1.2 million dollars. Yes. Okay, and uh, if I if I understood what was happening there, it, that uh, one that you you really uh, 
if you could borrow against that, you really could, uh, since they do basically cost the same thing, all you really are trying to figure out how, how to way to get started. So that's exactly right. Once you do that, uh, your your cost does not go up. I suppose could even come down. And I understand, uh, you know, for for kids who uh, perhaps don't have access to uh, electronics now, uh, to the internet and whatnot, that uh, don't have the equipment for it, that you have some sort of a of a minor pad that uh, you would have to provide them or yeah, you if, would provide if, them? If we're looking today and, and our leading contender, and I certainly don't want to tell folks that here's what we're going to use and here's why we're going to use it. Technology changes so quickly I, sure. I wouldn't even think about committing to something a year out. But if we look today at a Chromebook application, that Chromebook application would allow students in our schools to have internet access that's filtered so it's, it's child safety compliant. It, it meets our needs. In addition, when they take that home, if they have bandwidth, they're going to have the ability to get out on the net based on their wireless access at, access at home. If they don't have bandwidth, they're simply going to have their textbook downloaded as a PDF file. So they're going to be able to read their textbook even if they don't have bandwidth at home. So we think that's going to be a, a pretty exciting prospect. Yeah, I would say. One of, the, one of the questions that folks have asked, we have asked a lot, is what's the level of our, our bandwidth uh, existence today? And we're going to try to do some survey with our folks as they come back to school just to get an idea of, of what bandwidth availability looks like in our community right now. Yeah, okay. All right, well, very good. We'll all be uh, keeping an eye on that, and it really sounds like a splendid idea. And I think you may be among the first in the state to do this, at least at the level you're looking at. We have some schools in the state that are looking at sending home digital technology. So they're looking at sending home iPads or, or uh, laptops. We don't know of anybody who is sending home uh, content in an open source manner. A lot of folks are buying content, but we're really a lot more interested in the open source content because of the price and because of the ability to generate upgrades. And it's a perfect time for us because this is implementation of our common core. So we have to change content anyway. Seems to make a lot more sense to do that at a time that speaks well to the common core, aligns well with the common core, but it will require not so much a change for the big pe for the little people, but a change for the big people because a lot of us have been reliant on textbooks and reliant on that driving our curriculum. Yeah. There's a change for teachers as well. It's, it's going to be a real challenge because our teachers are, instead of being textbook driven, they're going to have content that they're going to have to modify and amend and change. Now it's going to be readily available, just like things on the net right now, but their skill set is going to have to change a little bit to make this a real success. Well, I can see a lot of interesting ramifications of this, uh, which we probably don't have time to go into. Uh, okay, well, let's leave it at that. We'll all be uh, following that, and uh, I hope you can get the support and the money to, uh, to have it happen soon. Uh, I noticed, uh, well, we're just about to uh, need to take a break, so that won't work. ACT scores, I think, uh, uh, I saw some numbers the other day, which I believe you've kind of corrected me on, that said that, that Tullahoma was slightly above the, uh, the state average, uh, slightly lower than we were last year. But uh, I think you have a little different perspective right. on that. Yeah, I think the best data out there suggests that the state is at one number, but our state is one of eight in the nation that universally gives the ACT. You'll have a lot of states that may give the ACT to 10, 15 percent of the students. And that's 10 to 15 percent of the students who are obviously going to college. So it's, it's really not a fair comparison unless you look at those universal access states. Additionally, we've seen a bit of a, a decline in ACT in the last couple of years in the state of Tennessee because we just transitioned from ACT or work keys uh, to test possibilities to only one option and that one option being the ACT. So it, you've seen a bit of a decline 
in our average score, but you've probably also seen an increase in every subset taking the test, which is kind of a neat irony to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, with that, folks, we need to take a short commercial break, and we'll come right back. Hi, Grandma. It's Jake. I'm, I'm calling to tell you, you I love you more than anything in the whole wide world, even ice cream. I love you more than spaghetti and meatballs. I love you more than snakes and monkeys and sharks mm -hmm. and whales and prey mantises. Uh, bye, Grandma. Love you. Let it all in with Charter Phone, including unlimited local and long-distance calls. We're back, folks, and we're talking today with Dr. Dan Lawson, the uh, uh, director of Tullahoma City Schools. And uh, I wanted to, uh, to ask him, um, that we're all interested, it's been one of the most uh, controversial uh, uh, things going on in school systems over the last year, and that is the new teacher evaluation uh, standards and, and uh, procedures. And now you've had a full year uh, to uh, to deal with that, what's what's the bottom line? Is there a, is there a summary in here somewhere? Or yeah, I think there are a couple of takeaways on this. First, uh, the biggest single concern that we had as we were looking at the the new evaluation program this time last year was the uh, the time that it took to accomplish this level of evaluation at the scale at the state required mandate. Uh, the state heard that, pl that uh, cry from everywhere. Um, SCORE was charged with the task of evaluating the first year of the evaluation and provided feedback to the state that said, when you've got a teacher who's performing at, at a level four or five on the qualitative side of, of the data, then you may need to look, but if they're on the quantitative side, if they're on the student test scores numbers with a four or five, you don't need to worry too much about the process. Let's don't spend the same amount of time with our best teachers as we need to spend with our teachers who are growing. So I think one of the things that, that we should expect to see this year is we have seen the State Department of Education come back and say, there need to be some changes. They have taken those discussions, are taking those discussions to the State Board of Education, and we believe there are going to be some changes that allow us some latitude to spend more time supporting those teachers that need the assistance and to spend less time just as a matter of compliance with those teachers who are performing uh, remarkably well today. Sure. Well, the, I recall that the uh, the amount of time, you know, and, and actually that evaluation process takes time away from the classroom work, so uh, that was a, a major concern. Uh, so uh, does, the, uh, does the Tennessee Board of Education have the authority to, uh, to make those changes, or are you looking at legislation somewhere? No, in, in fact, the, uh, the statute required for an annual evaluation of each teacher. So within that prescribed statute, then the Board of Education, the Tennessee Board of Education, not local boards, but the Tennessee Board of Education then had to adopt some plan. The plan they adopted was called the team evaluation. But that team evaluation, they have the ability and the authority to amend. And based on the information that we have from the State Department of Education, that amendment is on the way. I think the, the governor has been supportive of that amendment. Uh, SCORE in their evaluation has been supportive. Uh, the Department of Education has suggested this needs to change. 
and certainly each of the 136 school systems have talked about that change. So I, I think they're going to be open to that idea and I believe that before school uh, is underway early September we'll see a change. Ah, uh, I was going to say, it's about time for you to get a decision, right. you know, school's, uh, school's ready to start. So. You look like, uh, so you think you're going to have the, uh, the changes you need to, uh, uh, to sort of level the playing field here and take away uh, the criticism that's been uh, levied against that whole, whole app system? I, I think it's, it's certainly going to be better. Is it going to take away all criticism? Certainly not. And it, it's not going to be an exact science ever. As well, after all, you know, I mean, you'd rather not have any evaluation if you're on, if you're on the receiving end. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I think we can make it better. I think uh, everyone at the table wants to make it better. And I think that it can better serve our teachers and our kids if we streamline the process and if we focus the attention where it really needs to be focused. Okay. Well, I know it's another interesting uh, comment in the uh, paper the other day that there were some teachers that were opting to stop using student teachers or teachers' aides because they were concerned that uh, the quality of the work they were doing might wind up reflecting on their uh, and th And that's a, work. a very serious dialogue with, we have had with several universities. Um, if I'm in a situation that my evaluation is going to be based on how my kids do on a test, I'm not going to be inclined to let someone learn with my kids. So what we proposed as a solution was this. Limit those folks who may supervise student teachers to level four and five teachers. There are five levels, so limit to the top two quadrants, those level four and five teachers, and then second, don't use that data as a basis of their evaluation. Use the data previous to the student teacher placement. Well, you know, I kind of have a, a different outlook on that in the sense that, that around the world, the better systems have had uh, enough resources in the classroom that if a kid started falling behind, they worked with that kid and brought him right. up to speed. I would think that using student teachers or teachers' aides to do that would really result in raising the level of the evaluation. And certainly student teachers are a different scenario than teacher aides because that student teacher has a responsibility with each university to be in charge of that classroom and to provide those classroom experiences. They lead instruction. Don't have any question about teacher aides. The, the question really is about the status of student teachers and where does their data count? Maybe I don't know what a student teacher uh, does in the classroom. Are they actually conducting the, the they, teaching? Yes, sir. They actually it's, conduct the teaching. It's their uh, on-the-job training, if you will. That's exactly right. They typically, in our system, they typically begin with a, a limited experience. And by the time the semester is over, they are taking care of each class in the school day. So it's one of those deals that they are taking the place of that teacher and this is their OJT, this is their experience to learn how to teach. Maybe that needs to be looked at <laughs> again also. It, it's a real challenge. Yeah, so yeah, I can, okay, under those circumstances I can see that being a, a bit tricky. Uh, I also noticed the other day that uh, Nashville has just this year raised the starting salary to forty thousand dollars right and Tullahoma's is we're probably thirty three five thirty three to thirty three five would be my guess that's a big difference and uh, I, I know we were saying a little earlier you you mentioned the fact that uh, your your start was lower but your your high was higher right. and uh, I can see some pros and cons in there but Getting the right crew out of out of school uh, should be pretty significant. Well, okay, uh, I think we're uh, flat going to run out of time here in a minute. Uh, also, I was uh, as we mentioned uh, the the paper the other day mentioned that Nashville was going to start a GPA scale of 5.0, right? And went up from 4.0 to 5.0, but. You said we've been doing that for years and years. Yes, and and let me kind of explain that process. 
In, uh, Do it quickly. Okay, in Tullahoma, you get a five-point possible GPA if you're enrolled in advanced placement classes. If you're in honors classes or enrolled in classes at Montlow State, you have potential for a 4.5A. And if you're in a regular class, that's a four point. What Nashville has done is just move to a, a grading plan that's very similar to what we've done for the last 17, 18 years. Ah, okay. Well, with that, folks, uh, we have run out of time, as always, and there's a couple of other things that uh, I wish we had had time to cover. So we'll need to take a short commercial break and wrap up. Mark, you've won just about everything there is to win in racing. What's next? I'd like more people to know about ER Extra. The emergency room at Harton Regional Medical Center? I just want them to get the best care they can get. That just gets me right here, Mark. <laughs> Maybe you'd like to pay them a visit. <laughs> ER Extra at Harton Regional Medical Center. <laughs> ER Extra. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. <laughs> Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. We've been talking today, folks, with uh, Dr. Dan Lawson, who is the director of Tullahoma City Schools. And uh, so let me uh, give you a chance. Is there a, a word you'd like to uh, put to the folks out there? Absolutely. You know, it, it's easy to talk about e-text and to think about technology. You and I spent a minute or two looking for some data on my phone before this started. Uh, but while that's exciting and while that's fun, that's not nearly as critical as the involvement of the parent or the guardian sitting down at that kitchen table spending time to make sure that we understand concepts modeling things like reading and if there's a couple of things I would suggest it is devote that time to your child devote that time to spending it on understanding the multiplication tables working on those rote skills working on writing experiences doing some diary work and share with your child the importance of learning. And it's not about a box, it's not about a book, it's about a parental priority. And if that is not available, how do we patch that? I, th I think we patch that by way of the fact that we do have extended contracts, we do have things that happen after the school day. We would absolutely love to see our parents involved in saying, my child needs some help. We also have adult uh, parent training classes that we offer in some of our schools. I was going to say so the parents. No absolutely. Doubt. We're yeah. really working yeah. toward those ends. But it's, it's not about the shiny things. It's about parents who yeah. make education happen. Okay. Well, that, folks, uh, we're going to have to wind up. Uh, Dr. Lawson, thanks very much for taking time to uh, educate us. And uh, thank you, folks, for inviting us into your parlor, and we'll see you next time.